Like in our main show, The Loud House, the Casa Grande family is full of unique and lovable characters that'll take you on a wild ride in Great Lake City, spanning three generations under one roof. The Casa Grandes will make sure your time in the Mercado is a positive experience, and they will make sure you are also well fed and have a good time when you join them for their big dinners and activities. But out of all of these family members, which of their relationships are positive enough for the whole building, and which ones should get kicked out of their apartments? I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and these are the Casa Grande's relationships, healthy to toxic. Before we start, we're going to lay out a few rules. We're not going to include what characters did in the comics and video games, nor in the Loud House as it is a separate series. So what they did in episodes like The Spy Who Loved Me and in the Thanksgiving special, The Loudest Thanksgiving, will not be included. Also, episodes having the end part of With the Casa Grandes will not be included as they were treated as pilots for the spinoff. With that out of the way, let's get started. As always, we'll start with the family's most positive relationships and work our way down to the most toxic. These are the healthy relationships. Starting with the gold medal of healthiness, we have the best best friend duo, Ronnie Ann and Sid. Like Lincoln and Clyde, Ronnie Ann and Sid have been best friends since the beginning of the series. They skateboard together, watch their favorite pop band 12 is Midnight, and they take care of animals together. While Ronnie Ann and her friends believed that it was Sid revealing their secrets in the episode Gossipy Girl, Ronnie Ann tried to defend her by saying that she only dares with them. It's true, she did only do dares. And when Sid revealed her secret to the school, it was Ronnie Ann who revealed another secret first before everyone else did. And in the episode I, Breakfast Spot, after Ronnie Ann took advantage of Sid's breakfast bot, she rescued Sid from the bot and had to destroy him before he really hurt her. And she apologized for taking advantage of her robot. For those reasons, we're giving Ronnie Ann and Sid the gold medal of healthiness for truly being there for each other when something goes wrong and caring for each other's families and they're willing to help them out when they can. Earning our silver medal of healthiness, it's going to Ronnie Ann and Bobby. Ronnie Ann and Bobby have been very close since the very beginning. They've been known to help each other when one of them is having trouble with something. As in the episode Stress Test, Ronnie Ann was able to help Bobby pass the big academic test, BAT, so that he wouldn't fail school. Or in the episode Walk Don't Run, Bobby helped Ronnie Ann clean out one of the dogs to help her with her dog walking business. I can give you the family discount on a doggy bath. However, they get the silver medal instead of the gold due to the episode Flea Market, when Ronnie Ann and her cousins take over the Mercado so Bobby can be at his date with Lori. But Bobby's micromanaging gets the better of him, and she quits working the Mercado. After talking to Lori, he apologized and let them take over the store in their own way. Other than that, Ronnie Ann and Bobby do love each other and will always have each other's backs, no matter what. The Bronze Medal of Healthiness is going to Ronnie Ann and Lincoln. While Lincoln is back in Royal Woods, Ronnie Ann and Lincoln still find ways to hang out together. They video chat a lot, either talk about their day or ask advice about something. She still pranks him through the mail with diapers, eggs, ketchup, and even mailing Sergio, but these are harmless, playful pranks. In the episode The Horror Scope, she was wary of being romantically involved with him because she worried it might ruin their friendship, but she's glad that they stayed friends for now. Next is our first group entry, and that is the best friend trio, Ronnie Ann, Lincoln, and Sid. While we have already talked about them, we feel all three of them deserve a mention together. While Lincoln hasn't spent much time with Sid, we do see that they get along very well, and Ronnie Ann treats them both as her best friends. As in the episode, An Utter Mess, when Ronnie Ann wins two tickets to Dairyland, she didn't want to have to choose between them when they both asked to go. In the end, all of them were able to go together. And in the episode prank Anniversary, Sid was able to join them in their prank Anniversary prank battle war when she pulled the good prank on them. Overall, they're all great friends together and deserve to be the first healthy friend group on our list. Next is our first married couple, the main leaders of the family, Rosa and Hector. While they do bicker a lot, Rosa and Hector love each other very much. They have been together for 40 years and have always been there for one another. Their relationship was tested in the episode Grandparent Trip, where Ronnie Ann believed that they were getting a divorce and tried to fix their relationship. But it turned out, as they explained, they were simply blowing off steam at each other and it was perfectly normal. We may bicker to blow off steam. That doesn't mean we're not happy. And their love for each other was too strong to dwindle. And in the episode Taco the Town, when Rosa's tacos become super popular, they end up missing the roles they play and presumably spend all the money they made on it going on a cruise and buying other expensive items. Overall, they don't rank any higher because of some of the flaws they don't like about each other, mostly Rosa, but they love each other to death and will do anything for each other. Next is Ronnie Ann and her mom, Maria. Maria works long hours to provide for Ronnie Ann and Bobby, but she still makes time to spend with Ronnie Ann. Ronnie Ann looks up to her and tries to help her when she can. This is seen to great effect in their main episode together, Vacation Day. 
days. Ronnie Ann tried to spend the whole day with her mom without anyone bothering them. This was supposed to be my day with her. While it did end up as a disaster, Maria made up for it by allowing Ronnie Ann to come with her to work at the ER so they could spend some time together. And in the episode Guild Trip, it was revealed that Maria wanted to travel when she was young. She never had the chance because Ronnie Ann and Bobby were born. Ronnie Ann wanted to win the trip overseas to make up for that. Overall, Ronnie Ann and Maria have a healthy relationship, but they rank lower because of some questionable moments with Maria, such as Maria faking an injury to get out of a traditional dance, or Maria immediately heading to a spa when Arturo arrives, but that one's more understandable because she never actually had a day away from them, speaking of which. Next is Ronnie Ann and her father, Arturo. Even though Arturo was all the way in Peru, he was still able to video chat with Ronnie Ann and spend time with her. When he returned to Great Lakes City in the half-hour special Operation Dad, Ronnie Ann tried everything to have her father stay in Great Lakes City, even turning into a rebel to get him to stay. Breakfast is for losers. Later, when Arturo was leaving, he realized that while taking care of kids in Peru was important, being there for his daughter was more important. After that, Arturo gets Ronnie Ann and Bobby on the weekends so he can make up for lost time with them. This duel ranks lower than Ronnie Ann and Maria due to Ronnie Ann breaking up Arturo and her teacher in the episode Teacher's Fret, and Arturo not believing them about Beto being a jerk to them. We'll get to that later. Other than that, Ronnie Ann and Arturo have a healthy relationship together. Next is Ronnie Ann and Carlota. Carlota treats Ronnie Ann like a little sister, and they get along very well. As in the episode Trend Game, Carlota shows Ronnie Ann everything that's trending and they end up having a great time together. She also helps Ronnie Ann on how to get Carlitos to copy her in the episode Copy Can't, but they rank a little lower because of the episode Miss Step, where Carlota fakes an injury to get out of a traditional dance, I could dance with you, Dia, which forces Ronnie Ann to take her place and undergo intense training. While we understand that Frida takes this traditional dance too seriously, it wasn't cool of Carlota to let Ronnie Ann take over for that kind of intense training. Overall, while they did have problems in the past, Ronnie Ann and Carlota care about each other and will work together when they can. Next is Ronnie Ann and the rest of her friends, Nikki, Samir, Casey, and Laird. Ronnie Ann and her friends, Nikki, Samir, Casey, and Laird all like to hang out together and they all have a good collective relationship with each other. They all look up to Ronnie Ann and they all see her as very cool. They work together and can get tasks accomplished. Like in the episode Team Effort, even after their gym coach, Coach Crawford, got them in trouble with detention, they all worked together and got their tasks done. We did everything you said. We have players, equipment, and uniforms. And they helped Ronnie Ann with her fear of her skateboard after her bad wipeout. However, they rank lower because of screen time, and we don't get to see Nikki, Samir, Casey, or Laird as individual people, but we'll place them here. Next is our next married couple, Carlos and Frida. Don't get us wrong, Carlos and Frida love each other, and they care very deeply for one another and their family, so why are they this low on the healthy tier? Well, it's for a couple reasons. When Carlota was born, Frida forbade Carlos from skateboarding because she was worried that he would hurt himself. However, he started skating in secret when Ronnie Ann moved in. Frida also disapproved of Carlos's man crush of Arturo and not stepping up to his mother in the episode Cursed. We can't place them any higher because of that, but overall, they still support and love each other. Our last spot in the healthy tier is Hector and Vito. While they've been best friends for years, it's not exactly the best friendship. Vito likes to hang around in the Mercado, but is more interested in eating everything in the store rather than hanging out with Hector. In their main episode together, Maxed Out, when Hector believed Vito owed the Mercado $10,000, he tried to get him to work there only for Vito to damage the Mercado, and Hector banned him until he paid off his tab. Don't bother coming back here until you pay off your tab. But later, Hector forgave him for the damages because he realized he missed his best friend. So we're willing to cut them some slack since they've been friends for years and put them in the bottom of the healthy tier. Now we've reached the relationships of the Casa Grandes that could use more work. This is the gray area. Our first relationship in the gray area is going to be a quick mention to Ronnie Ann and Carlitos. This will be the only Carlitos relationship we're talking about since we don't see him with anyone else. Since Carlitos is a baby, we don't see him interact much with really anyone technically. But with Ronnie Ann, they have their own episode together in Copy Can't, where Ronnie Ann tries to make him copy her in anything she does, but it backfires when Carlitos wanted to be with her all the time and not with his own parents. Perhaps in the future we can see more of Carlitos' relationships. Next is the cute pair of Carl and Adelaide. Out of all Carl's relationships we put in this list, the one with Adelaide is his healthiest. However, it's still in the gray area because it didn't get off to a good start. As in the episode Uptown Funk, when Carl learned that Adelaide was invited to be in the subway train with her dad, he pretended to like Adelaide to get in. After Carl broke the controls and apologized to Adelaide, she stopped the train from going super fast. She even took the blame and they became actual friends after that. Afterwards, they still hang out and play games together they would both enjoy. Later in the episode, Don't Zoo That, they fought about how to take care of the animals to earn Junior Zookeeper badges for the zoo, but they decided to drop the argument to actually help the animals. Overall, while they still have a lot of work to do with their friendship, we're happy to put them near the top of the gray area. Next is the mother-son relationship, Rosa and Carlos. While Rosa loves her son, Carlos, Carlos is a total mama's boy, and Rosa won't put up with any nonsense he makes. Like when Rosa got mad at him for taking apart a torta to try and help Bobby with his BAT, test, and he lost his torta privileges for who knows how long. You lost your torta privileges, mister. There was also that one time that Carlos ate 
ate a churro that wasn't made by Rosa, and she didn't make him food for a month, so he had to survive on frozen waffles. I had to survive on frozen waffles. For those reasons, we're placing them here. Next is Bobby and Hector. Bobby is very loyal to Hector and the Mercado, and Hector wants Bobby to take over the family business one day. They make a good team running the Mercado together, but we had to rank them pretty low because of the different ideas for running it. More specifically, in the episode Bobo Business, when Bobby wanted to make some certain changes to the store, but Hector refused to listen to his ideas. It got to the point where Bobby quit working the store and went to work at Mr. Hong's store to express his ideas. In the end, though, Bobby and Hector apologize to each other, and they end up making a commercial for the Mercado with the whole family. Overall, Bobby and Hector do make a good team when they work together, they just need to listen to each other a bit more. Next is the divorced couple of the show, Maria and Arturo. Being the only confirmed divorced couple probably wouldn't be healthy at all, right? Well, in this case, they don't fall into the stereotypes of standard divorced couples. When they first saw each other for the first time in years, it was definitely awkward for both of them, but afterwards, they decided to stay friends for Ronnie Ann and Bobby. In the episode Date with Destiny, when Ronnie Ann and Bobby thought they were going to get back together, Maria and Arturo made it clear that while they don't love each other romantically anymore, they are still best friends and they care deeply for their families. While it's not confirmed what led to the divorce, we can speculate that they divorced over Arturo going to Peru to help other kids rather than be with Ronnie and Bobby, so we'll place them in the middle of the gray area. Next is the two brothers, CJ and Carl. While we don't see them interact much, what we do see is a perfect example of a mixed relationship. They both like to play games together, especially their favorite game, Luchador, which CJ keeps winning at, and they fight like brothers normally do. As in the episode Silent Fight, they continue to fight even when they have to be absolutely quiet. But they don't fall any lower because they put aside their differences and work together, and the fact that it's CJ that gives Carl haircuts, which Carl is very grateful for. He's a genius with clippers. He'll never cheat on you again. Next is Rosa and Carl. While Carl and Rosa have a decent relationship, he mainly tries to use her for money or schemes. Rosa tells Carl to do simple stuff like cleaning his mess, not playing with his food, or getting him to study. My chilaquiles are for eating! In the episode Monster Cash, Rosa dresses up as El Cucuy, a monster in Mexican folklore used to scare children into behaving, to appropriately scare Carl into cleaning his room and returning the money he schemed from people using El Cucuy. So while they have some work to do to improve their relationship, we feel comfortable placing them here. Next is Bobby and Carl. Carl and Bobby don't really have a good relationship together. Carl likes to insult Bobby at anything he does, prank him, and trick Bobby into doing things that he wants. He has shown little regard to Bobby, such as Bobby being miserable for failing his BAT test and then gloating at him for bets that he won. However, they do still care about each other. As in the episode Slink or Swim, Bobby teaches Carl how to swim in exchange for teaching Bobby how to tie his shoes. I don't know how to tie my shoes. There was also the episode Dynamic Do-Over, when Carl loses faith in El Falcon due to the actor telling him it's all fake. Bobby puts on El Falcon and gets the whole family to play the show to make Carl believe in it again, so we can't place them any lower. Our last placement in the gray area is going to Hector and Carl. Carl's relationship with Hector is similar to Rosa's, except they have some more falling out than with Rosa's. An example is in the episode Senior Class. Hector joins Ronnie and Carl's school to get his school degree, but ends up becoming an embarrassment to both of them, which leads to Carl trying desperate measures to get rid of him. He'd be out of our school for the rest of the semester. As well as in the episode Fool's Gold, the treasure hunt led by Hector they've been doing to get gold was actually just for coupons to a taco restaurant, causing Carl and the rest of the gang to be angry with Hector. Overall, while Hector and Carl don't have a good relationship, it's not enough to place them in the toxic tier. And finally, we have the Casa Grande relationships that need a lot of work, even if Rosa tries to fix them with charms. These are the toxic relationships. Grabbing the bronze medal of toxicity is Hector and Arturo. The relationship between Hector and Arturo is complicated at best. When Arturo was coming back to Great Lakes City, Hector completely resented the idea of him returning. I asked for money for much. Yeah. We learned that Hector has a grudge against Arturo for divorcing Maria and has hated him since then. After Arturo decided to stay in Great Lakes City, Hector decided to hug him and let go of his grudge. However, we can see that the two of them are still not really on good terms. In the episode Dial M for Mustard, Hector scowls at Arturo to buff up his score on his hot dogs. We can't justify placing them in the gray area due to lack of screen time together, so we have to place them in the toxic tier. Grabbing our silver medal of toxicity is the last sibling duo, Carl and Carlota. Out of all the relationships between siblings, we found that Carl and Carlota's was the most toxic of all of them. Carl likes to mess with and interrupt Carlota's vlogs and live streams as well as pick fights with her. In the episode Shortcut, when Carlota messes up his haircut, he swore he would never forgive her for it, even after he got his hair fixed. I'll never forgive you for this. There were times when Carl asked Carlota for help, but it was mainly so that he could earn a quick buck, and Carlota pulled Carl's pants down for retaliation. However, they get the silver medal because 
there's just one relationship that's worse than anyone else's in Great Lakes City. But real quick, before we get to our last entry, if you're enjoying this video, do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help getting to our next milestone, and we have lots more videos we'd love to share with you. Thanks so much. Finally, earning our gold medal of toxicity is Ronnie Ann, Bobby, and Beto the Alpaca. While they've only had one episode together, the toxicity between this trio, mainly because of the alpaca, is worse than anyone else's we've covered. Beto de Alpaca was Arturo's best friend in Peru that he raised himself. However, Beto doesn't seem to like Arturo's family, and he wanted Arturo all to himself. Beto kicked Bobby and pushed Ronnie Ann into water, pulled Bobby's pants down, and put stickers of himself on Arturo's family picture. Ronnie Ann and Bobby tried several times to show Arturo that Beto was an awful alpaca, but they kept failing until they finally got proof in the news show of Beto kicking them into the ocean. Beto? I saw what you did at the pier today. After Arturo's heart was broken when he had to kick Beto out because of it, Ronnie and Bobby decided to bring Beto back, and they all agreed to try and get along for Arturo's sake. But overall, Beto was a total jerk to Ronnie and Bobby, and this relationship completely deserves the gold medal of toxicity. But which Casa Grande's relationship is your favorite? Let us know what you think and comment down below. Make sure to hit the notification bell and binge our other cartoon videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.